are obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Well, hello, and you're listening to The Connie Fife Show, and I'm Connie Fife, your unstoppable diva. And many folks know me because my tagline is that we are unstoppable together because I believe that we are a village and we can succeed. But, you know, why do it alone? When you could do it with someone else, you can get there a lot, lot faster. So keep that in mind for today. So I want to thank you for being here. And again, share our videos, share our interviews, because we continue to have some amazing giveaways that we get from, from our guests, from our, our sponsors, our advertisers, because they want you to know who they are as well. And we have everything from T-shirts, autograph books, um, tote bags, and oh my gosh, it just goes on and on and on, the list of things that we have. So make sure you're sharing Tag us, tag the Connie Five Show, and also tag our guests. Let our guests know you're listening too. And our get- giveaway from our guests, you're going to find out a little bit more about in a minute, but it's going to be uh, her gift, which is a Legends Coloring Book. And from what I could tell, there's songbirds and there's some other, other fabulous things in there. And you're going to find out in a minute why. That is so important to you to have that. So make sure that you keep on sharing and keep on listening to the Connie Fife Show because we are here to help you with your business needs. We, we're, we're edgy, we're spontaneous, we're unscripted, and often we're just unedited. And we talk about how you can move up in the C-suite or go out, live your dreams, and build that lifestyle business. We're all about keeping that passion of life activated for the world's most daring minds. So let me start by introducing today's guest. She's an award-winning, best-selling author of a dozen books, focusing on Celtic mythology, folklore, mysticism for the modern age. She's obtained her BA in honors at Holland University and her master's and doctorate in literature from Columbia University and King's College in London. She writes for both children and adults. Her bestseller, A Story of Becoming, is sold, has sold over 250,000 copies. Her books on Celtic mythology include Legends of the Grail, Stories of Celtic Goddesses, and Heroines of Avalon, and many other tales. She's won over 30 literary awards. And at the time of this taping, she gets a phone call to tell her she's been nominated for yet another award. So I want to congratulate her for that. And welcome to the Connie Fife Show. Dr. Ann Kate Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, I'm so thrilled, so thrilled that that you are here. And I made a comment earlier that I love your house to background. And, and it, it's really um, a, a very unique space, especially for what you do. I mean, you are living in that space of what you do. So I love that. I love that. So we... <laughs> I wanted to really jump in and talk about, I mean, we, we, we agree, we, we agreed before, right now there is so much chaos going on, so much change going on um, from mythology, um, you know, changing of history, which really pains me that some people just want to like wipe that history away because it's our history. You know, good or good or bad. I mean, you need to take that and use it for the good and change the future. But why does your storytelling, your folklore, why is that so important for people to understand, especially during these times of chaos and change? That's a really good question. And and I'm a little bit of a hybrid. So I'm an academic and an intuitive. So I do I do a little okay. of both. 
And I like to go back. I lived in England for a long time and I spent a lot of time in Ireland. I'm, mar I'm married to an Irishman. And um, when you go back and you live in some of these places in Europe, you see these layers and layers and layers of history. And, you know, we can pull down statues, but that doesn't really get rid of the history. I think it's actually no. better to understand understand our, the, le the levels and they're horrible um, things that happen and they're beautiful things that have happened right but I think we really need to be able to embrace both we can see it right now with what's going on in at Notre Dame our mother um, yes Paris, who is um it's actually built on a rose it's called zero point it's a rose sacred site in in Paris in France and so who knows, maybe they're esoteric secrets, the, the mother herself, maybe there's something that's trying to reveal itself yeah. there. Right, right, to reveal itself. Mm. Um, it, it's, just, it's just interesting, uh, I mean, to see that. Well I, well, I mean, just talking about that, even the aftermath, the photos, you know, they're showing right in the center, you know, the cross, everything is still sitting there intact. Right, which right. Which was... Right. Like you said, is there, you know, is there a message there? Are they are they telling us something, sharing something? So I'm 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 a history buff myself, <laughs> yeah. Um, which and, and I, I just love I just love history, and I'm, I live in Los Angeles now, and I guess not I guess, but uh, one of the complaints I have is there's no history here because everybody is like, you know, let's rip it down. Let's, you know, take it away. So, I mean, I myself, I'm looking to go back to where there's more history on the East coast for me. But, um, so how, how is that? I mean, you also talk about why, you know, the ancient heroines and goddesses are even important to us in life. And it's funny just the other night I was watching the History Channel and they were talking um, about Washington, D.C. Washington, and how it was set up and how at one time they actually worshipped the goddesses. But I, I don't anybody talk about that or, you know, or share that, that we worship women. Um, so why is it that the heroine and goddesses are so important? Well, you know, back to Notre Dame, just because it's, mm -hmm. um, if we're thinking about it today, um, do you know that it was almost pulled down during the French Revolution? I, yeah. It was Robespierre, and they, it was saved because they rededicated it to the goddess of reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it might be time mm -hmm. to rededicate it to, I don't know, Mother Nature. <laughs> right, or, or something. But, yeah, I, and I knew that. I knew about the, the rededication. Yeah. Yeah, but, so, yeah. So, you know, I was told stories by my grandmother. And in Virginia, I grew up in Virginia, and she would tell stories while she was making soup. And I right. knew that uh, our, our, my lineage goes back to Bamborough Castle in Northumbria. There's actually a show about it now, The Last Kingdom. But I was so, so interested in, and um, the tale is that there was a land grant given to the family in 1668. Uh -huh. But we still do have a farm that's land grant in Virginia. And John is buried out back. <laughs> we, have so, we have so much in common there. A part of my family did the land grant years ago, too, but it was in, in Kentucky, rural Kentucky. Um, we we and, probably came over on the same ship. We, we probably, who knows? Maybe we're kin. Every, and the more digging I do, I'm finding out more and more people I'm related to. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. I was so fascinated by it. And, and when I got the opportunity to, you know, I, I was given an overseas research award. And so when I was able to go to England and do this work, of course, I've made a beeline there and I found the Forrester family Bible. And I realized that we, that, that our, the family went through the Scottish Kings and back to the early Irish Kings. Now, what, when I was given the award, my job was to, um, to, to work with, the uh, Lady Gregory, L Lady Isabella Augusta Gregory, mm -hmm. who was W.B. Yeats's patron. So she was very famous in Ireland. She made the uh, Abbey Theatre. She reinstated Gaelic into the school. She was very fascinated by Celtic um, stories and wanted Ireland to re-embrace the stories of their people. So I was really fascinated by this. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, flew, I flew to Dublin and drove uh, to Cool Park in near Galway, and I thought oh, it would be really busy. You know, there'd be lots of people there. 
Well, I was the only person there, you know. There were cows and sheep. And oh, my God. You know? I, I'm laughing, not at you, but I'm laughing because uh, we, we, again, our history is very um, from you know, Celtic and Irish. My daughter went to school in Galway. Oh, there you go. So and, she and, some of these tales. And that's what she said. She calls me. <laughs> and she and, and she finds a you know a mate, the room share online, and she's like, "I'm doing this." I'm like, "Okay," because she had gone there for vacation for spring break and her freshman year of college, and she calls me. <laughs> and she, what well, you just said, I could hear her saying, "It's like four o'clock in the morning now, my time, right?" <laughs> and she's like, "Mom, I'm here." I'm like, "Okay, so everything good?" Okay, mom, there are cows. And sheep. There is nothing here. And my daughter's a city girl. (laughs) And then we're going back and forth. And then the other girls show up and she's like, I I can't stay here. I I need to be closer to, you know, to to the city. And I'm like, okay. I said, you know, now, now, mind you, mom and dad just paid for five years to live in this one place. Okay. So, and she's telling us, well, I'm going to go someplace Closer, and I just said, figure it out. Let me know. So now I don't hear from her for a couple of hours, and I'm thinking, oh my god, what happened? You know, the worst, as as moms do. So she calls me, and she's like, okay, I'm I'm in town. I got two roommates. Um, I'm all cool. Everything's good. And I'm, of course, I'm like, well, how, how did you get there? And she said, well, I started walking. And then there was this guy driving by in his little buggy, this little hay buggy, and he was walking his sheep. So I jumped in the back of his hay buggy. He took me into the city. And I was just laughing. And then I said, well, where are you staying? Like, mom doesn't have any more money right now. Like, what are you doing? Oh, that's okay. I found I'm staying with these two guys. And I'm like, you're staying with, oh, yeah, I'm, you're staying with two guys? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to share the bedroom with one. And I'm like... You know, like my eyes are rolling like in the back of my head at this point. And I'm like, okay, what? And she's like, oh, don't worry, mom. They're gay. It's cool. I could see. <laughs> I love it. And then what was so cool about the people in Galway, the new landlord talked to the old landlord and they just transferred the money over for her to stay at the new place. I thought, wow, wasn't that so super cool? So it it was, I mean, I can go into more stories about that. But when you said about the cows and there was nothing, I was like, oh, my God, that was my daughter. (laughs) It's true. It's true. When you go to these, these, um, these, even now, I I went, I guess it was summer before last, we went to Glengariff and just rented a cottage for a month. and. Uh And it's lovely. Yeah, we were right. I, at the time. I was looking. I'm very interested in the Oem stones and the Oem. Okay. I've been learning the Oem writing, which is the ancient Irish writing. Right. So I, I was on the quest to find the oldest Oem stone in the world, which is by the Hag of Bear in the in the uh, Bear Peninsula, in south of southwest of Ireland. So we so we did that, and it's so fun because you go to these little and they look like little little houses like the most normal little houses Mm -hmm. and then you'll have people singing and dancing and telling all kinds of folk tales they call them rambling houses you know and they'll get up and they'll the irish just really have this this ability to 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 tell tales to tap their feet to bring magic into the world you know it's it it was um it was delightful for me yeah yeah folklore and fairy tales yeah she she did it she did enjoy it and she she ran into or visited many of those rambling houses <laughs> the book that that i just wrote the legends of the grail is mostly based in ireland okay and, uh heroines of avalon the one that i just did is based mostly in britain and okay. uh i these are fun. The, a lot of the characters are from Arthurian legends. So if you, mm-hmm. if you do um, Legends of the Grail, you can go back to really ancient goddesses, back 10,000 years. The Kaleach is a 10,000 year old woman of the old woman of the world who stirs her paw. Mm-hmm. She's wonderful. Um, and the, these are more contemporary. They're fifth to 12th century. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, a lot of what you, a lot of what you're talking about, I mean, they, they've turned them into 
you know, major motion pictures. Is that something that you have interest in? Oh, I think there's some that would make amazing movies. Yeah. Like, for instance, well, in the first book, Kaysar, um, Kaysar is the granddaughter of Noah, and she's not allowed to board the ark because she's in the wrong lineage. But she's intuitive, and she knows that the that the world that the flood is coming. So she goes, mm-hmm. "Well, I'll just make my own ark." And so she makes her own ark, and she puts her fifty friends on it, and her and her and her horse, her herd of horses. And the, the, you know, the storm comes and the, and it, and there she is floating, thro- floating through the ocean. And finally, the, it's the goddess Eru who grabs her and brings her ashore. And I, I, I could totally see that as a movie. Um, yeah. And, 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 you, and you don't hear about, yeah, you don't hear that. That's the Lover Cabal. It's actually a, a biblical, Lover Cabal was once considered the history of Ireland. It's now considered myth. Okay. So there's a, a great blending of the two. Mm-hmm. But the goddess tradition in Ireland runs very deep. Um, obviously, um, well, in the Celtic church, luckily, uh, St. Patrick tore, tore down a lot of goddess temples, but he also recorded the stories. So. <laughs> well, that was good. That, right. That was good. Definitely. That, that he, that he <laughs> right. yeah. um, So with all of, the, all of the folklore and, you know, the... the the heroines and the the goddesses and really understanding, you know, where they're, where they're at now, you know, and you talk about how can they shift the focus to enter the enchanted mystical landscape and, and carry on with that question is how can that help them today to really embrace who they are? I think it takes a little, a little bit of practice, but the first time it happened to me, I was in probably Ireland and this, no, and the second time, well, there were two very profound experiences. Actually, I think the first one was in Britain by the Chalice Well and the second mm-hmm. in Ireland. But it was the first time I had the experience of being in a thin place. And there are thin places in the United States, too, like Mount Shasta. You know, okay. be to you. I'm in the Blue Ridge Mountains. There are places here, too. But there are thin places where the veil, the, the, basically the veils are thin. And you can contact, you feel, I mean, especially if you open up your poetic imagination, mm-hmm. it does require a poetic yes. being, you can begin to tap into the David kingdoms, angelic kingdoms and so forth. So, so it's like this. It's, I think it's actually pretty simple. I mean, we've lived in this materialistic age for some time and, you know, it's popular to be an atheist or whatever, but, it, but we're killing the planet. So it's really not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, one thing about going back and embracing goddess traditions is, is you're entering a world that's very animated. It's yes. very alive. And I think it's healthy. It's actually right now it's healthy because if, if we could collectively do this, we'd probably save plant the planet. But so it's like this. So we we're walking along a road and you know, it's, it's just a road and there's a tree, well, it's an oak tree and there's a bird or you can walk along a road and the road kind of has sparkles in it. And you notice this tree and the bird starts to sing to you and you go, Oh, look, there's a doorway into this tree. So you put your back up against the tree and you enter in your mythic imagination Mm-hmm. And go with the oak tree and see right. what the oak tree wants to share with you. See, so it's a it's a poetic way of being, and it does require a little bit of practice. Some people shake a rattle, or some people sing a little bit. There, in the Welsh tradition, you have a way where you listen. You listen to the wind, and if the, let's say the west wind is blowing, then you're gonna. It's, it comes as green, and it has mm-hmm. a sound to it, and so do you sing with the west wind. And so that's it's another way that you start to enter the poetic imagination. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if we're in times of change, according to the Mayan priests, we uh, 2025 is the beginning of the golden age. Maybe we want things to be shaken up, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely been shaken up. <laughs> um, and I had shared that I, 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 I'm intuitive and sometimes it's very, very strong and yeah. other times it's not. But it's it's not when I'm busy and I'm, you know, engrossed with what I'm doing, either with with the business or or whatever. And so then I, I don't have it. But like you said, if you really sit with it and listen, um, it, it, it will come to you. I, I believe that we all have that gift. It's just knowing how to receive it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And not being frightened of it. I mean, you know, we part of through history, part of doing the, the work 
recovering the goddesses is realizing that a lot of them were demonized. Yeah. And so, you know, when, when we're uh, blood, I was in, in heroines of, of Avalon is, was one I started working with and I thought, Oh, here she is. She's the classic murder and adulteress. And I need to <laughs> <laughs> her story, how we're going to do this. Right. And, um, and, and yet she makes a lot of sense once you, the Aaron Rood is, is one of the Welsh goddesses from the, from the Mabagian, mm-hmm. it was an old uh, Welsh mythology book. And she's beautiful. She's the one that sings with the stars and stars sing back to her. And so she weaves life. And part mm-hmm. of what she does with these other magicians is that she creates this, this um, goddess blue eye with or a woman blue eye with for her son. So it's a little bit of a long story, but that's the short version. And so this woman comes up out of this flower or this combination of flowers and she takes on womanly form. But if you think about it for a minute, she doesn't have moral codes, you know, the no. human codes. They're, they're missing. She hasn't heard about the Ten Commandments. <laughs> right. Not right. what was going on. She was created to be a wife and a lover of Lou, the sun god. So, you know, after they make love for seven years and after he rides off, well... She's a flower goddess, you know, so she's going to go along with the next guy that rides by. So, <laughs> in, our, in our modern culture, we understand it a little bit more. Of right. course. Right. Well, yeah, I guess that's where my, yeah, my, my heritage comes from. And it's interesting, my, my stepson does a lot of research. He's in Germany. Okay. Uh, and he's, he's a professor there at, at the university. And he, his study, his grant is studying language. So he is so strong, I mean, emotionally um, invested into coming up and creating one language. But to do that, he, he himself speaks about seven languages, but he's been researching all of the history around the world. And he found Germany, he really finds Germany to be that center, that core of where everything started, where everything, everything comes from. So it's really interesting even having those conversations with him. So he just did a huge uh, research on, on Celtic and, and what you're talking about. So we, we were having that conversation recently. So it's just interesting to hear him talking about that research. And so he's going to be writing books and, and different things, you know, such as that. So he'll be probably a professor. He's at Marburg University. And um, so he'll probably continue there as a professor. And he really finds uh, European living much more appealing to him than being in the U.S. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's different. It's different. Yeah. I, I really have enjoyed both. I lived in Los Angeles for a time to do it. Mm-hmm. But when you're in you're in the old world, then um, you get these layers of history and it's fascinating. I mean, learning all the languages. Yeah. I mean, the Celtic world at one point extended just through Germany um, all the way, you know, way up north, way down south. It was huge at one point. And then it, as the Roman invasions kind of got smaller. Mm-hmm. And then when I was doing my research, the last bit of the goddesses, you can really find west coast of Ireland and Cornwall and Wales. Uh, and a little bit still in Germany, like Freya and so forth, and also toward the North Country. So, but you know, when I left, I spent eleven years there. And when I I left and and went to California, there was something really wonderful just about the openness and the light, and people, you know, the open mindedness. People were very in- interested in spirituality, and yes, and so that's also very refreshing. Sometimes not to have history, you know, you you you, you don't feel the the burden, the karmic burden. So R- R- yeah. yeah, that, that you're absolutely right. And that's, is the one thing I see, find here that it is open. Everyone is open to new ways, to ideas, to, you know, somebody being intuitive. It's, you know, you know and if you go to some small town or old country, you know, you kind of looked at like, you do what? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I yeah, so I, I, I definitely agree, agree with you there. Let's take a really quick break for a sponsor, and we'll be right back. The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find the Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C Suite Radio, Transformation Radio iHeartRadio. We are also heard on Google Play, 
Apple, Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConniePipeShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. And we're back. Oh, yeah. And you're listening to The Connie Fife Show. And I'm Connie Fife. Our unstoppable guest today is Dr. Ann Kate Sullivan, an award-winning, best-selling author of a dozen books focusing on Celtic mythology, folklore, and that, 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 that word uh, for the modern age. <laughs> it was like tongue-tied there. So, so Ann, um, finish this sentence for me. I am unstoppable because... Oh, Well, I am unstoppable because because the golden thread runs out in front of me. Because I speak to the guardians of nature and they welcome me on the winds of change. Hmm. Profound. So what's what's that moment in your life that had the greatest impact on you? Well, there are many moments, but in one that really had a huge impact was um, it's actually in the beginning of Heroines of Avalon in the intro. And I was in England and I was an academic mm-hmm. and I was study, you know, doing very well, but something was really missing. I just felt this piece of me was missing. It was bothering me. There was no reason for me to be depressed, but I did feel a little depressed. And so I went to Glastonbury because Glastonbury in Somerset, England is the Jerusalem of the British Isles. Okay. And, um, and I, I went there looking for King Arthur or Guinevere or something that would, that would help me make sense of things. And what I really wanted to find was the, was the feminine face of God or the feminine face of the, fem- yeah, the feminine face, the goddess. And Glastonbury is the goddess stronghold. I mean, still is the st- goddess stronghold. You know? So I went and I, I love the chalice well. I don't know if you've been there, but it's, it's a it wonderful happens. place to go visit. If you ever get a chance, um, they, it's, it was protected by Tudor Pole. So they're lovely gardens and you feel the fairies when you go in. And, and it has the, the, the well lid has the vesica Pisces. So you enter, you can't help but enter, especially if you're imaginative anyway, but you enter this mythic world just by walking in there. Many people say that Joseph of Arimathea came with his staff from, from the Holy Land and planted the, a, a, um, a, the Holy Thorn on the Wariel Hill there. And some people say that the Holy Grail was kept in that well. Okay. Also might mean that, that Mary Magdalene was hidden there, which is right. the other thing. So it's a powerful place. And, um, so I sat and I meditated and I was upset at the time I was upset and I kept looking, there's a tradition there where you, where you go ask the well maiden, uh, to tell you who you are. Okay. You see your unfolding future. Who, who am I truly? Why am I here? What's my life purpose and mission? And you look into the well and if you're, and this is the heroine's journey, you know, which is different from a hero's journey. Her, hero's right. going to come you know, but the heroine is really becoming more intuitive, more receptive, more clairvoyant, more cl- clairaudient, more clairsentient. And so I'm looking into the well, and I definitely had had an experience with a presence. It was a dark mother, and um, I wasn't expecting it, but I felt so loved, and I could smell roses everywhere, mm-hmm. and I knew I really had been graced with this feminine mm-hmm. face mine. And so for 35 years now, I've gone back every year and I I still go, I go back to the well. And I tell you during times of change to go sit by a well, there's something, there's something, um, you, I mean, even with like Notre Dame, our mother, the church called our mother, right there, you, you realize these ancient places have stood the tests of time. There might've been, would have gone on. They're still there. They're still there. And if you go into some of the ancient cairns, like the story of the Kaliak, which I did later in Ireland, some of these stone circles are 10,000 years old and you're yeah. crawling in. You actually, you actually, one of the techniques is to crawl inside a cairn. Now a cairn is a stone circle that's got earth on top of it. Okay. Some of them, the long barrows are, are, are basically all ancient mausoleums. It's where people were buried, but you crawl in 
to listen to the goddess, to listen to the dreams of the earth. Mm -hmm. And in understanding the dreams of the earth, you remember, you remember your own dreams. So Mm -hmm. if you go in again with the poetic imagination, you crawl in, you're very humble. Mm -hmm. You don't go in knowing anything. You leave everything, you know, outside. Right. You You go in, you put your back up against one of the stones and you just enter that world. It, it's amazing, really, how, how the natural world, the intelligence of both the seen and the unseen worlds want to help us through this time. Mm-hmm. And actually, we need to be able to, to listen to them to go through this next five years of huge you know, transformation and change. Yes, the feminine is emerging, you know, probably right. under Notre Dame, the rose is blossoming. All, you know, the, the sacred sites are very, very on right now, and they're very good to visit. If you're in California, you can still you can go up to Shasta, and you'll still feel the increase in these energies. Mm-hmm. You can really walk to any any lake, any body of water, anywhere. Yes, I was going to say any body yeah. of water because I do that. I'll, I'll just go and sit. It's, it's just something magical, even mystical, about just sitting and listening. Um, even even to the point, if you don't have water, go to YouTube and you can play that falling water and just sit there and listen to it and 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 meditate and i mean like this past year my um you know like i said being intuitive and losing so many family members this past year it was it was just incredible for me and you'll understand this and I, many some of our listeners will understand this i actually had someone come to me so that she had to come to me she was sent to me to tell me that i had fulfilled my contract and it was time for me to continue living my life and doing what I'm doing because I'm now doing what I was meant to be here for. Wow. <laughs> Talk about fleet being blown over to be sitting in a meeting, in a conference, to have somebody come up to you, move the guy sitting next to me and to say, I need to talk to her. And I had no idea who this woman was. And it was, it was, it was moving. It was, it was life altering. Um, I feel it. It's very, it feels very loving. And, it's, mm-hmm. and you know, when you have those moments where you feel the presence, mm-hmm. you, know, you know you're living out your life purpose and mission. Yes. There's a solidity that develops in you, a com- yes. confidence and solidity. Your voice strengthens. The, your writing gets stronger. Your messages right. get stronger. Whatever your gift is, it right. strengthens. And, and you know you're never alone. You know the, your, no. your guardians are with you. On this in this world and the other world, and you also don't have to fear death anymore because no. you realize there's no such thing, really. Right, we'll drop there's no such thing. We carry on, right? Uh, I would love to continue this conversation, but we do need to, <laughs> we do need to bring it to a close. Uh, so okay. let our listeners know about their gift that you're giving them and how they can find it and how they could find you. Well, my gift, I wish it was a complete um, goddess coloring book. And at this point, it's a page. <laughs> okay. okay. What you can do is you can really think when you, when you start to color, you can think about what was my wind when I was born? What song Ooh. was coming to me? Was it a violet wind? Was it a green wind? Was it a sparkling wind? Was it a speckle? What was coming to me? And just... Just start to draw and enter that mythic imagination. So you go, ah, it was a violet wind. It was from the east and I'm a spiritual person having a human experience. Or maybe it was a a shining wind and you're here to bring light to the earth. So we don't know. But it's good, you know, to practice just drawing and painting and entering that Mm -hmm. mythic imagination. Yes. Oh, thank you. And where can they find that? Uh, It's on my website. They might have to contact me. If you go onto my website, it's um, Anne, and my name is A Y N. Yes. Anne or Anya, and Anne Kate Sullivan. And so, Anne Kate Sullivan.com. If you look up A Y N, it will probably come up. But Anne Kate Sullivan.com is my website. And if you go onto contacts, you can see how to contact me. I'll send you the, the page. Um, and, and if you give it to me, we'll just include your link here as well. Okay. So when we do our show description and I already have it from you. So we'll make sure we include the link here. And then of course we'll send them to your website. And I know people can find you all over the net. Yeah. I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> easy. Books for everywhere. <laughs> yes. Yes. And again, congratulations on your latest award. 
Thank you. Thank you. It was a lovely show. I feel so much love coming from you. So I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here. Well, that's all we got for today. And, okay. Okay. And thank you for being here. Proud of the work that you're doing. And um, love to get to know you more. And I'm sure that we have some more stories to share. It seems like yeah, we have so many similarities that who knows from the Appalachian Mountains and the Blue Mountains and probably some connection in there somewhere. Absolutely. We'll stay in touch. You never know. If you're ever in the area, stop by. I will. I will. Definitely. Definitely. So, okay, that folks, that's all we have for today. But re- remember, keep that history. Keep that history alive. The good, the bad. Take it for what it is. But also use that not to define your future, but for you to define the future that you want that will make you happy, your life successful. And that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. I love our tribe, our family, our members. And thank you for continuing to follow us each week. And remember to share, share, share. And because we like having fun around here. That's part of our Celtic background here as well. Um, I talked about my daughter being in, being in Ireland. She'd call me at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and say, Mom, guess where I'm at? I found a new pub. So, yeah, we like to enjoy our time together. <laughs> I'm Connie Fife, Recovering CEO, Corporate CEO, and I am moving ideas forward. And we are keeping the passion of life activated. And if you want to be seen and heard everywhere, you want to be advertising with us on the Connie Five Show, just visit ConnieFiveShow.com for those details. And now a word from our sponsors, the ladies, better known as Jaden Wilnona and the We Thought Ladies. They are the publishers of the 25 hottest authors, artists, and advocates. So you want to get yourself a copy today by simply heading over to andwethought.com. And also make sure that you check out our talent concierge. We have, I'm sorry, we, we just have the greatest marketing publicist team around where I get involved. I do one-on-one coaching, team coaching, and masterminding. So if you have a successful career, you have found that fame and saying, you know, I really want more. I want to shift. I want to go and share my message with the world. Give me a call. Check us out at teleconcier.co. We'll have a conversation free of charge, and we'll see if you qualify to be represented by the agency because Talent Concierge represents the world's greatest minds who are keeping the passion of life activated. So I'm going to leave you with today's thought. Here is the world of imagination, hopes, and dreams. In this timeless land of enchantment, the age of chivalry, magic, and make-believe are reborn, and fairy tales do come true. Fantasyland is dedicated to the young in, in heart and to those that wish upon a star. Keep wishing and your dreams will come true. I'm Connie Fife. And I am your unstoppable diva, and you're listening to The Connie Five Show. Until next time, activate your power and keep the passion of life activated. Hey, y'all, it's Connie Five. Thank you for listening to The Connie Five Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to theconnyfightshow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week, activate your power, and be unstoppable together.